learner audience, ladies and gentlemen, wish you a good morning. <laughs> I am proud to be associated with this study. You heard more about spiral knot today. I will just confine myself to the scientific aspects and I will give the bare minimum crude facts. The rest of it is in a big paper which is going to be published soon and maybe we will be publishing it in the, presenting it in the Academy of Medical Sciences in the doctor's meeting. Because we have a mixed audience, I just prepared the core essence of this. That is a four temple view of Chidambaram temple, the famous, world famous Lord Naraja temple from our college. You can see all the four towers from our college. And, and in the inset you will see the real temple and within that you see the preceding deity Lord Nadraja and Sivagama Sundari. So everybody knows that nutrition plays a vital role in the growth and development as well as the prevention of diseases in children. And as Dr. Vasupalaya said, uh, the malnutrition under five years is closer to 50 percent and uh, even our Prime Minister accepted in the Parliament it's a national shame. And Spiral is a well-known nutrition supplement that helps to improve nutrition as well as prevent infection. In fact, this is one of the nutrition supplement that has been recommended by WHO as far as 1975 that all the developing countries should take it in a big way. And this Spiral now became popular when NASA gave it as a nutrition supplement to the aeronautic space scientists and it was given to the space shuttles, the aeronauts were carrying this. Like uh, cine actors and cricket people become brand ambassadors. Uh, the space astronauts became the brand ambassadors for spirulina. This study was done in a resident school, uh, Seva Mandir at Parangipete, very traditional school, very devoted school. That's why we chose this school. And they are on Gandhi and principle. This is one school which was visited by our father of nation, Mahatma Gandhi. 150 students in the age group of 11 to 13 years who were studying 6th and 7th standard were enrolled. It was done by a study was done by a team of doctors and paramedical staff from the division of pediatrics and the biochemical analysis were done by the bi division of biochemistry. Even before we started our uh, experimentation, we had a preliminary visit to the school along with the parent teachers as well as the students as well as the school health officer and also our team of doctors who gave them uh, beneficial aspects of the nutrition, girl nutrition, and also uh, uh, briefed them about spirulina, and we also dewormed the child, all those girls. The period of study was from January 2012 to June 2012. All girls were in that group were enrolled. Only children who had uh, systemic illness were excluded from the study. The first visit, we did a thorough clinical examination, eliciting the history, anthropometric measurements, and all the clinical findings were uh, recorded in a pro forma. And at the same time, blood samples were collected for estimating hemoglobin, serum proteins, serum zinc, serum ferritin, and serum albumin. And three capsules of spirulina were given daily to each student for three months. So this uh, responsibility was given to the warden of the hostel who ensured that these, uh, they had stored these things in the cupboard in the mess itself. And they meticulously gave these capsules to those children and the compliance was excellent. Almost all the children, 115 children completed three months course. And this, this study is unique in the sense that, as somebody said, uh, three to six grams are recommended for. This we wanted to test on girl children because it, even 10 rupees is a big money for poor children. So we did this study with a minimum of one gram or uh, 300 capsules, 300 milligram capsules, three ca capsules working, to, working out to 900 gram, milligrams. And this study is also unique because though we have a lot of papers in the global study on this, uh, many of them have been either with the smaller numbers or in a larger numbers with very few scientific investigations or uh, follow-up was not that long. We had a, a wonderful follow-up because we had an assembled a very good team of people to do this study. These are the school children who are assembled and our team uh, estimating the height, weight. <laughs> our doctors examining the children thoroughly because they also identified minor illnesses, vitamin deficiencies, and gave them prescription for these children because we took uh, entire care of the uh, health care of these children also. And they were also referred to our medical college if they had found some diseases or deficiency. So all these uh, findings were also recorded in a meticulous pro forma. And blood samples were taken by our trained staffs who could even draw samples in a newborn, just born new babies in one prick. So we took a team of nurses who had worked in a project vaccine trial where we took samples from a 45 days old babies, 187 babies. 
During the second visit, again all the anthropometry measurements were repeated. Clinical recordings were all the 50. There was no dropout in the first visit, though there was some dropout in the third visit. Blood samples were again conducted for estimating the biochemical parameters. So out of these 150 girls, only 100, uh, because initially we thought we will wind up the study for three months. Later it was decided by Professor Manivasam that we will continue to give for another days so that there is no improvement in the first three months. We will record that in the subsequent visit. So all these children were followed up on a weekly basis for their well-being because our uh, health, uh, our pediatric nurse and a social uh, worker, pediatric social worker who lives nearby, they, every week they went to the school to find out whether there were any side effects to make sure there is a compliance and they had discussion with the warden and the school teachers whether all the children were taking up those capsules. And also they were also noting down there were uh, any side effects. Surprisingly, because any study you have some, because we had given assurance to our ethics committee from which we took the clearance that any side effects will be reported to them. And this is our uh, second visit when the children were assembled for again recording the anthropometers, collecting blood samples. And we even we distributed biscuits to these children because some of them were crying after the blood samples. <laughs> uh, this you will see that uh, the, uh, 300 milligram of capsules contains 65 percent. It is one of the vegetable proteins because animal proteins are notorious to have a very high protein content, but it's very expensive for uh, developing countries like India. This has a very high 65 percent protein content. Not, nothing else has got it. Probably it has got the highest. And maybe the second one will be the. Mushroom, mushrooms they also contain. These are the rich source other than doll. You know doll and uh, pulses are very expensive whereas they are not very expensive. And this contains essential amino acids next only to the breast milk. So this is a very, very economical, uh, I won't say as our dean said, they are not cheap. It is a cost effective and economical way of securing the new food security. Everybody talks about food security these days. This will help in the food security of our children. The third visit, there was a dropout of nine girls because some of them uh, had developed chicken pox and some of them left the school. So we were able to continue with the nine, 91 children and then, then samples were connected for hemoglobin, ferritin, zinc and serum proteins. Uh, the results, all the param uh, parameters were uh, very good. The results were excellent and it was analyzed in the biochemistry department and the results were uh, also analyzed, data analysis was done by the statistician to know the significance of these values. So you will see that almost 89% of the girls had significant weight gain than the age appropriate level. We expect a weight gain of 1.5 kilos, that is 3 kilos in one year and in another in six months time we expect a weight gain of only 1.5 kilos. Except these two 11 girls, we had a weight gain of more than 2, two kilograms as much as 7 kilograms, which is a very high percentage because we didn't, because if you do it, uh, uh, study in an outside place, like if the children coming from home, their dietary, their dietary modifications will be there. They will be taking non-vegetarian stuff in the weekends. Their food will be rich during festivals and functions. But this is a residential school. The children with standardized food, they were given in the mess. So you can only say the improvement was only due to the spirulina. Height also in a year and the age group of these children will have a height gain of 6 centimeters in one year. For six months we expect a height gain of only th 3 centimeters. But you will see that nearly 76 percent have shown significant increase in the height than age appropriate level. So 76 percent except these three group, 15, 20, 22 the children, they were within 3, cent uh, three centimeters. All of them were uh, more than 76, showed more than normal. Yeah. Because weight will uh, increase easily with your food supplement, but height is genetically determined. You, do, you may not have a very good response. But these children were nutritionally deficient because it's almost uh, uh, destitute children who have no very, very poor children who cannot afford because they don't charge anything from these children. It's a free home. It's like almost like an orphanage where people cannot afford their children. They are left left there. But only thing is the wonderful thing they are doing it. They are all very well disciplined, very organized. You will see those children were, were surprised such boarding schools. They will have a lot of skin diseases, anemia and malnutrition. We didn't see. We saw those girls well, well dressed, simple, very organized. 
body mass index though it doesn't vary during a short period because it is a proportion of its a ratio of weight in kilograms by height in meter square into 100 it's a ratio so the, the both proportionately increase in this age group weight as well as height but it has shown some significant improvement uh, up to even uh, four because you know 18 is normal for children between up to 25 we take it as normal and about 25 to 30 we take it as uh, overweight and beyond that we take it as obesity there was some they were all falling within that uh, normal weight only thing they showed some improvement so now coming to the biochemical parameters the hemoglobin uh, increased to up to 86 percent of the children showed an increase in the hemoglobin so it is not significant in another 14 percent and when you worked out the mean in, uh, before treatment and after treatment pre-treatment is 11.7 .7. it is a uh, mean of this on the statistical grounds and post treatment it was 12.8 this point here so which is statistically significant i am not going to those uh, p values and other things that will be in the scientific paper so there is a significant difference between the mean values of hemoglobin before and after treatment there is a significant increase in the hemoglobin value in most children on serum ferritin levels because the serum ferritin represents the serum ion in the body that corresponds to that is responsible for producing anemia so after three months 92 percent of these children showed an increase in the serum ferritin 84 out of 91 and for the next six three months up to 95 percent showed an increase in the serum ferritin which means their hemoglobin status is also increasing their anemia status is also decreasing so it in significantly increased in the third month and sixth month compared to the baseline with a maximum increase in the sixth month so the, we were successful in increasing it further in the second third th second three months on serum zinc levels this showed a remarkable one thing this is i want to stress this on this because almost all of them 100 percent showed a remarkable increase in zinc because now a lot of thing is given importance is given to zinc for promotion of health it's a growth factor responsible for improving the growth in low birth weight babies preterm babies it is routinely recommended for children who have uh, babies who have reduced growth and now who recommends this for uh, cholera for diarrheal diseases the only two things that are recommended by the who for diarrheal disorders in children is zinc and uh, ors these are the only two prescribed drugs and we show, saw that it is increased so it is also a prevention of infection because today also in hindu there is a note that uh, one third of the indian population or uh, world population are dying because of diarrhea and uh, diarrhea and pneumonias and now uh, nutrition it has been proved beyond doubt both respiratory infections as well as diarrheal infections are well controlled by use of zinc as well as weight gain and this is a very significant finding in our study so on protein levels this is also important for improving the uh, immunity of the children because antibodies are produced based on this protein as well as hemoglobin we showed an increase in the order of 62 percent in the first three months and it rose to up to 79 percent in the subsequent so when we are able to establish with the one gram less than one gram of spirulina this amount maybe if we increase a higher dose which we hope to do it in the further studies we can make it as 100 percent in future if you give it for a longer period or increase the dose of spirulina on albumin levels again we showed i showed an increase of this is one of the major proteins in the blood 66 percent at the end of three months and 80 percent at the end of six months which is statistically significant very significant so to conclude uh, it has been proved even in our it's a small prospective observational study it has got a, it's a wonderful uh, nutrition supplement it is non-toxic and does not have any side effects in our, in our study that all the anthropometric measurements and BMI improved along with the increase in the hemoglobin, serum ferritin, serum zinc, serum protein, and serum albumin levels after the use of spirulina. So I would like to acknowledge the university authorities for permitting us to do this study. The dean of the medical college, the medical superintendent of the hospital, we are very supportive to have allowing us to make use of the hospital staff and the infrastructure and available in our medical college and the university. The correspondent headmistress and teachers of Seva Mandir Parangipetai, Vasipal Creation People Welfare Association, we sponsored the study by giving the spiral enough free of cost. 
such an expense, you almost they, they supported the study with a tune of 5 lakhs rupees. And all the staff members in my team, teaching and non-teaching, postgraduate students of the Division of Pediatric as well as the Division of Biochemistry. And uh, I also would like to acknowledge Dr. Maniwasan, who is the principal investigator, <coughs> Dr. Ranjan, Dr. Rethirajan, who have been very instrumental and who are uh, responsible for initiating the study in our medical college. And these are our references. Some of them are in the book given to the dignitaries. And thank you for the patient listening. Thank you, sir.